All right, so uh, I want to welcome everybody today to our uh, monthly uh, webinar today, and I uh, want to um, welcome Rosalind here today, who's doing a presentation for the Society of Deaf and Hard Hearing here. Um, Rosalind is based in uh, Cape Breton. So we have a number of uh, prepared questions on our end that will float like a conversation. Um, but we certainly encourage folks, if you have questions as we go along, um, just pop them in the chat or just raise your hand. We'll be sure to answer any questions that you have. And we'll also leave lots of time at the end for questions too that uh, you may have and uh, hopefully leads to uh, a great discussion today. So um, it's, a, it's a pleasure having you here, Rosalind, today. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for everybody joining us today, just on this wintry, blustery day. Um, so anyway, Rosalind, I just want to get started here. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about the uh, Society of Deaf and Hard of Hearing here, and especially uh, the, about the Cape Breton chapter? Sure. So David, what I did, I took your questions and I sort of put together a, um, a PowerPoint. Sure. So maybe what I can do is bring the slide up and we can go through that. I think a lot of the questions will probably get answered that way, but we can go through them. Yeah. Um, and then uh, uh, see, see what happens here. Just see if you can share. If not, I may just need to tick a box here. I'm, I'm ready whenever you tell me if All it's right. not working. I click the share screen. Host disabled participant hey. screen sharing. One participant. One sec here. Let's see. All right. Try that now. All right. Oh, there we go. Perfect. Perfect. All right. So I want to go to my questions here. And I'll go to this one. You will have to excuse me because I'm not. Yes. Yep, no problem. I'm just glad we got it working. So all good. Take your time. <laughs> all right, let's see. This one. And then I think I can go to to whoops. Now, what do you see on your screen? Do you see everything I'm looking at? Like the Yeah, so what we're what we're seeing right now is just your folders there. Oh, you're looking at my folders. A PowerPoint present. Your uh, it just highlighted on a PowerPoint presentation right now. Second now, slideshow. So you're not seeing me flip through them at all. No. Okay. Uh, Sometimes if it's not working, just uh, click out a bit and then kind of go back in. Okay, I'm gonna click out a bit. Yeah, I find sometimes that helps. There we go. We'll hit just. Hit. Try it again. And I'm going to go to it and I'm going to go back into hmm. Well, now. And if worse comes to worse, you can just email it to me and I'll pop it up there. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do, David, because I think it's. Uh, I think it's gonna be a little troublesome. What's your email? So it's, uh, I'm just gonna pop it in the chat for you right now. And just for folks that may want to eat for after meeting, I just put her in the chat there and just copy that. Got it. Sorry about this guys. Once we get going, you're going to be so impressed. <laughs> Sounds good. I'm just waiting <laughs> we'll wait for it to come through and then we'll get that uploaded. All right. I just sent it to you. Okay. All right. Bear with us here. Do, 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 do. I think I'm so technically like top notch until I try to do something and then I realize yeah. how fast I am. One sec here. I'm just waiting for it to roll through. I should be ready to go. I think there it is there, my chime. Yeah. All right, 
One second, everybody. I got it right here. I'm just going to open this up. And then, Rosalind, you can just kind of prompt me when to um, sure. when to switch slides there, too, as well. <laughs> Sounds good. Okay, one sec, everybody. Share the screen. Do, 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 do. All right, just let me know. Can everyone see that right now? Yes. Perfect. We see we see everything plus all the slides down the side as well. Awesome. Okay, Perfect. one sec. I just want to hit view, slideshow. Do, do, do. Just move this a touch. All right, so I'll work with you here, Rosalind. Um, <laughs> so here we go. All right. So, so there's our contact information. Okay, so the question was um, talking about the Society of Deaf and Hard of Hearing Nova Scotians and what we are, what, what it is that the Cape Breton office does. So our mission statement is to provide services to meet needs of um, deaf, hard of hearing, and late deafened people with dignity, integrity, and respect. So we deal with three groups of people. Um, we deal with deaf individuals, um, hard of hearing people, and late deafened individuals. So um, deaf people with a, with a big D would be deaf individuals who are culturally deaf, who use um, American Sign Language to communicate. Um, hard of hearing would cover people, the whole... Um, um, spectrum of individuals with hearing loss from mild hearing loss down to a more severe degree of hearing loss and late deafened people would be individuals who um, may have had hit some degree of hearing um, throughout their life and then due to some event uh, trauma injury all of a sudden became um, completely deaf at some point later in their life so they've had um, they have they, they speak, um, but because of the impact of deafness on their lives and without knowing sign language um, or any kind of manual communication, it can pose some um, difficulties or barriers for them. So there's three groups of individuals um, and they all have very unique needs. Um, so if we can move on to the next slide and I'm not sure where they, how, how these come. We can skip over this section, David. It just provided a bit of history as to how we came here. Um, basically, there is, uh, there's just two offices um, in the province of Nova Scotia. The Society of Deaf and Hard of Hearing Nova Scotians is the provincial organization in Nova Scotia. There's an office in Halifax and our office here in Sydney. The Halifax office looks after the, um, the, uh, the deaf and hard of hearing needs in on the mainland and our office provides services to individuals um, on Cape Breton Island. And though I did reference that we provide services to deaf, hard of hearing and late deaf and people here on Cape Breton Island, we also look after um, the needs of family members, the general community, businesses, organizations, and we'll look at that a little bit later as well. We are a nonprofit organization. Um, we're registered with joint stocks. We have two full-time employees, um, myself and Claire, who's also joining us today. Um, and we also have, uh, and we're also governed by a board of directors. Um, we are currently looking for board members, um, but uh, at this stage, though the uh, structure of the agency is going to change a little bit over the next year, um, because at this present time, the way we operate is each office, the Sydney office and the Halifax office, are each governed by their own local board of directors. And then they have representatives that sit on a provincial board of directors. So we have a lot of boards. So we're gonna to try to restructure a little bit so that we only have one board for the province and then have local committees at each um, regional level. So that's sort of how we're set up. And we'll just go back to the next screen. That was a fast presentation. <laughs> one sec here. I hit the space bar. I'm not supposed to hit another one. One sec here. 
I'll take it back to, uh, I got, uh, my fingers got too excited there. Okay. Um, Rosalind, just while I'm getting this back up and going there, I guess, how many board of directors do you have now that are on the local board? We currently have five, um, which is the minimum number that we um, must have for, according to our bylaws. Um, so we can have up to 15, which is, which is a lot for a board, um, but we do have the minimum number right now. So it'd be great if we could have a few more new people on, 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 on the board, um, just for logistics and making it uh, so that we can have meetings because there's not everybody could always attend as well. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, great. Good stuff. I was just more, more curious. All right. And I, think I got you fixed back up now. <laughs> so some of the services that we do provide locally and, and, and some of the services though, we do both offices um, provide uh, a lot of the similar services. Um, each area also has uh, pro, uh, sort of grooms their services to the needs of the, of the local area. So here in Cape Breton, we do tend to see more of a hard of hearing population um, but the uh, general programs that we provide here would be American Sign Language Interpretation. Um, and there is a little dollar signs after that, which basically means that there is a fee for that service. I'm going to talk a little bit about that, I think, a little bit later. Um, we also provide an assistive devices loan program. Now, the loan portion of that program, there is no charge. Um, so we have a selection of devices that the United Way does provide us funding for. It almost works like a library, like the McConnell Library. So you can come in, look at the product that we have, and you can borrow product um, for up to two weeks to take home and test or try. It's also great for businesses and organizations um, to see what they might need to make their place accessible or if you have somebody coming to visit you over the holidays and you wanna make your home accessible for them while they're there visiting you, come in and see what we have. Telephones, um, listening systems for the TV, uh, alarm clocks, basically any type of device that somebody with, uh, who's deaf or hard of hearing may need. If you were to borrow something and then you wanted to purchase it, then you can order from us. You don't keep what you have because there's only demos, but we would order something new in for you. And of course, the, you would purchase that. Um, our turnaround for product is pretty quick. Uh, I'd say within a week, we can have something in for you. Um, and of course, that is the, uh, the sales side of things. Services for the deaf and services for the hard of hearing are two specific types of needs. Um, for the deaf, a lot of that can be um, accessibility um, in existing services that are in the community. It could be literacy. Um, because the deaf use American Sign Language, which is a separate and unique language all of its own, so when you go to learn, say, American Sign Language for people who are generally interested in learning it, you are second language learning. Many people think that if they learn some signs and string them in English word order, they're good to go. You're not learning the language of the deaf. It would be very similar to you learning French words and putting them into English word order. You would not be speaking French. So learning sign language is a learning a second language, which makes it difficult when you're writing notes with a deaf person, um, because sometimes what we hear people saying is, you know, I, I'm, I'm reading a note by a client and, you know, there's words missing, words are backwards, there's endings off words. It could be almost perfectly grammatically correct in ASL when they're trying to put a visual language into a written form, which is very difficult to do because ASL really does not have a written form. Um, so there can be some complications and misunderstandings that happen there. That's where we come in because as a, as a person with that knowledge and background, we can help you with some of those misunderstandings or with some, you know, can guide you through working with the person. When I get into a little bit later talking about our roles, you'll see that my role can be Sometimes I go and say into, say if it was Breton ability, if you had, if you had a client, 
sometimes you'll see myself and Claire come because Claire works as an interpreter. So she is interpreting the, um, the, the setting. So she will be there to facilitate the communication. But her role as an interpreter is, is there only to facilitate communication. I would be there more as the person to, um, to provide this kind of information and um, advice or counsel with you and the client to provide those little bits of information and background understandings, provide the cultural information, the linguistic information to you. So that's where some of these services for the deaf come in and can be very vital and important. We have seen a lot of situations snowball and become worse and worse and worse until things can really blow up um, when they could have been resolved very quickly and easily from the beginning. Services for hard of hearing tend to be more around accessibility, um, counseling as far as understanding their hearing loss, why they're hearing what they're hearing and ways to um, cope with um, their hearing. So we can provide um, some speech classes, communication classes and things like that for folks with hearing loss. What we've been doing lately, and we just started it sort of as a pilot with folks who have hearing loss, have been speech design classes. So these aren't sign language classes as in learning ASL, but sign classes to assist individuals who have hearing loss to help them with communication. Many times, like a friend of mine who, whose hearing loss is to the point where she cannot hear anything anymore. Um, when we go out to, for coffee or we go to the show, she's really dependent on speech reading. And a lot of times she doesn't catch what I'm saying. So by learning a few signs, like if I sign to her, like, come on, let's go have a coffee. So it's just adding a few signs to help assist her with her communication. So we've been doing, um, we just started to do a few classes like that just to see how they're going to work out. And uh, so there is a fee for those classes. Rosalind, quick question. If folks are mm -hmm. interested in those classes, uh, I know you had the contact info, um, people can get in touch, but I guess how often are those classes take place? Is it once a week um, right now? Right now we're running the pilot and we're doing four classes um, for an hour and a half. Um, we're running a night class right now, and, and I'm also doing one outside the area in the afternoon, um, just to see how it goes. It's difficult because we have to choose signs that we think the person may know, may want to know. And as you can, as you can imagine, you know, through, um, your, your daily conversation with somebody, what words would the person want to know, you know, so it's, there's so many words in our language, trying to pick the right words or certain words that are going to be helpful for, for a person to know. Um, so we're, we're trying to get a feel for how this is going to work or, you know, um, and then we'll just reassess it. At, we'll assess it when we're done and just see what the what the feelings are from the people who are taking it on whether or not it's, it's actually doable. Sign language classes themselves, the deaf people have are, are teaching those classes. We're taking a step back as a hearing person and teaching those courses because the deaf, the culturally deaf individuals are saying, this is my language. Um, we want to be teaching our language and we respect that. So we're now referring people to deaf instructors. Locally, we don't have anybody. Um, so we are referring to um, an individual in Halifax that we know has been teaching. There are some online instructors. So that's where we stand right now with anybody who wants to learn ASL. We are not teaching ASL classes. So we have to be very clear about that when I talk about the speech to sign class. That's not what we're teaching. Um, so when we advertise that, if you come and you think, oh, I'm gonna learn some signs so I can talk with a deaf person or a deaf client, that's not what you're gonna get out of this class. 
if you want to learn how to communicate with a client or somebody, you, you would have to take an ASL class. And keep in mind that it is second language. So you're not going to, um, you'd be very limited in coming out of a class after six weeks, eight weeks, 12 weeks, 20 weeks, you're still going to be very limited. And any dealings that you have, you really should bring an interpreter in to that setting. Um, we caution people dealing with clients to use family members, friends, or any support person that may be on staff that may know some signs because a lot of times we hear people say, oh, I've seen them sign, they sign really good. Um, but do you know what they're signing? Right. And we have been in, we've been called into so many situations at the end when things get really out to hand um, because family members tend not to to disclose everything. They add things, they omit things, their signs may not be quite appropriate or correct. And this is when we come in and, and straighten things out as well. So um, just to keep that in mind. So we do public education sessions like I'm doing here today. Um, sometimes there is a fee depending on where we're going and what kind of um, workshop that we're giving. And the last thing to remember too is we also provide a hearing aid bank. So if you know somebody who has a hearing aid, the style that goes behind the ear, we will accept those and refurbish them. So if anybody is um, in need of a hearing aid and can't afford one, and falls below the low income cutoff, um, they can make an application through their audiologist and submit the application with some other documents that are needed. Um, and they can receive a hearing aid um, at no cost. The only cost to them would be the mold that goes on to the hearing aid and the batteries. So those are some of the services that we're providing here at this time. That's terrific, right? And I think that's that's good knowledge for everyone to know on the call there. So that's that's terrific, great work. All right, I'm gonna skip ahead here, Rosalind. Perfect. So I pretty much covered what, what we do here as far as the staff. So there is the two of us, myself and Claire. So for myself as the regional manager, so I would pretty much um, manage and, and look after the delivery of programs and services here um, in Cape Breton. I also look after the grants um, and uh, write the grants and deliver the grants and the budgets, of course. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, like with client services, sometimes I attend meetings um, that you might be having with the client with the interpreter. Because as you can see it on the community liaison officer side, Claire would provide the ASL inter English interpreting, but because our interpreters are bound by a code of ethics, which includes a number of things, including confidentiality, that cannot advise counsel, et cetera, she's there to facilitate communication. So I can work with say, um, say it's Grace's meeting with the client, um, I can be there to provide the background information, provide some advice or work with Grace in um, other aspects, whether it's with the family, whether it's with an existing organization. So together we can help look at some of the needs of the deaf individual. Um, Claire would be there to interpret to the client, et cetera. And then when the meeting is over, Claire and I, or around um, Grace and I could still continue to, to meet, to, see, to decide, you know, what kind of accessibility might be needed. Maybe there's referrals to mental health that need to be done. Maybe there's some considerations with deafness and mental health, um, which is an area that is not um, um, well known here or, you know, so a lot of times with our mental health professionals, a lot of testing and things like that are designed for hearing people, not so much for folks with hearing loss. So these are kinds of things that we could get involved in. And of course, I'm the liaison with the board of directors. Claire, as I mentioned, now we both have sign language training um, and both have both um, interpreter training. Um, but Claire is the first person out for, to provide interpretation services. When she is not available, because if we're, uh, there's a conflict in scheduling, sometimes I might be the person to come to provide the interpreting, but we do wear dual hats. So 
Um, the best scenario is for the interpreter to be there to provide the interpreting services, follow the client through. Um, but if I happen to come and provide the interpretation, I have to flip hats and now I'm not the community worker, I'm now providing interpreting services. So you can see where conflicts can potentially arise by doing that. Because anything said in the confines of that meeting cannot leave that meeting. Claire cannot go to a meeting, come back and tell me what happened. So, you know, if you think, oh, well, the society knows about this, the society does not, because she cannot come back and tell me anything that happened in that meeting. I can only find out if you call and tell me and, and ask for further assistance, or if I happen to be involved in the meeting. So that's, that's how that works. Any questions to this point? Um, Rosalind, um, just for your not for profit there, and some maybe <laughs> some folks may have this question, but where do you receive the majority of your funding from? Most of our funding comes from the Department of Community Services. And the rest of it would be through, uh, we would generate our funding. Um, and also we receive a very, a, right now was a smaller, much smaller grant portion from the United Way, which supplements our um, devices program. Awesome. Um, but, but yeah, the rest would be revenue generated. Now, just a quick question I have. Are, are, you, are you folks able to um, take donations? Um, for, if there is someone in the community, for example, that wanted to make a donation just for the good work that you're doing, can they write you a check or give you money? And are you have, do you have the ability, I guess, to generate a tax receipt for the person? Absolutely. We can, awesome. um, we can do that. Yes. That's, that's great. So yeah, no, I, the reason I ask that it's, it's Christmas time and I know some folks like to look at different charities and I know one of the things that we try to do with our webinars is highlight, say, um, say a lot of the good uh, not-for-profits that are doing unsung work that kind of go unnoticed. So I think it's important to, to, for us uh, here on the call to know that just, and uh, to pass that along. Right. Absolutely. And, and I must apologize, that is not part of what I included on my PowerPoint, but we do have a charitable registration number. So we can we can accept donations and we can write tax receipts to you. Terrific. Thank mm -hmm. you. So some of our challenges that we have when we talk about funding is funding, of course, because um, we uh, to, to, to keep to keep ourselves operational. Um, and I think there's a slide coming up that will, will surely demonstrate that. Also funding for clients because a lot of the devices um, are expensive and they are out of pocket. Uh, so there, right now there is no, uh, as you're probably aware yourselves, no provincial funding to help clients um, purchase devices that they may need, whether it be hearing aids or any of the assistive technologies they require, not just for deaf and hard of hearing people, but for um, any form of disability, um, except if we were to, to reach out to community services or service clubs or anything like that. So that is definitely a challenge for our clients. Board members, we're constantly seeking for board members. We're very fortunate right now to have the minimum number that we need, um, but it's, I think, becoming uh, harder and harder for nonprofits to, to, to get board members. Um, um, on, on to, to, to join. Um, so we are still, um, we're still looking for, for people to join us. And the other one I put down there was awareness. I, I think that even still after being here for over 30 years, that we're probably still one of the best kept secrets on Cape Breton Island, um, that, that we are here and what kinds of um, programs and services we have. A lot of that does come back to funding again because we don't have the, the, the funds to do really, um, I guess the kind of promotional campaigns that we would like to do. Mm -hmm. So those are some of the challenges that we face. And then one of the other questions was, what do I, um, I think it was, what do I uh, enjoy about my role or some of the things that, that I, uh, uh, so yeah, some of the things you enjoy about your role. Um, and and that's, that's, that's a difficult question. Um, there's, there's a lot of things that, that I enjoy about my role. Um, there's, there's a lot of diversity 
Um, so every day that I come to work, um, I, I have no idea where I'm going to be, where I'm going to go, or what's going to happen. I might have a, I might have a set schedule, but that can change on a dime, um, depending on what the phone call, what phone call comes in, and where where I may end up going, um, because of the clients um, and who they are and what their needs are. Uh, there, there's three sets of very distinct, unique um, groups that we deal with, with all different needs. Um, the interpreting, of course, can be another one. So we might come in and have a uh, decide, well, I'm doing my payroll today, and then I'm going this afternoon, I'm going out to see another client when the ER might call and say, look, we've got somebody up here, we need an interpreter, and off you go. Um, so you, and, and there again, you might not know what you're going up there for. You might be going up for, uh, mental health. You might be going up because it was a car accident. You might be going, you don't know. You might be going up to deliver because there's a baby being delivered. You just don't know what's happening. That's... So there's a lot of diversity, um, in our roles and our settings. And I also like to work with people with the devices, um, to have somebody come in and try on a personal listener and see their eyes light up to hear sound again um, is just um, very, very, I don't know how to describe it. It's, it's just so nice. And, you know, people, people have cried here when, they, when they're finally able to hear a voice again that they haven't heard in a long time. It's, it's very joyful. So um, there's a lot of different parts of my job that I, that, that I like doing. And because Claire's listening, I love to work with Claire. Um, I don't hear her laughing or groaning, but um, yeah, that's a, that's a good part of the job too. There, there she goes. She's laughing now. <laughs> yes, we can't hear, but we'll take your word for it. Where she's from, yeah, so. um, yeah, no, it, and it's funny you mentioned that, Rosalind. I was wondering that just as we we're chatting. I'm like, just where you mentioned, say, the emergencies that come up. I'm like, oh, I wonder how long, how often they have to go to the hospital and things like that. So it's good for you to kind of you know, draw that picture of what, what a day looks like, just how diverse it is. Right. So, and just. It is diverse. And I must say that, you know, a lot of times like Claire gets because of the interpreting, she's the one going out. And to also keep in mind that we are also on call 24 seven. So okay. we, we carry wow. cell phones, um, all the clients and the hospitals um, and the <coughs> business card, the, the cell phone numbers are, are both mine and Claire's personal cell phones. So it's not uncommon to work our nine to five and then go home and get the call at six o'clock to go up to the ER and be there till four or five in the morning. Um, so it's, it's uh, you know, the day doesn't always end at five. So you just don't know um, what, you know, what's going to happen and, uh, and weekends too. So yeah, you know, calls come in all the time. So yeah. Um just for, for folks on the call, do you have like an active case count or like a caseload of, of a number of individuals that you're currently servicing right now? Or do you have... Um... Our caseload numbers right now is about 260. Oh. Um, yeah, yeah, but that's including deaf and hard of hearing folks. Yeah, um, yeah so we're, we're around about 260 right now. Um, but that's not, um, you know, everyday active people, but we no, yeah, but you still, understand what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. still, I know, you know, with us, we, we are having it, but you know, it, it, that's, that's quite a bit. So I just kind of want to kind of illustrate just, just, uh, for folks yeah. on the call, just the, the, um, you know, yeah. how many folks that you, you are working with. Right. So yeah. I'm sure busy days, most days. Right. So that's absolutely. Great. And we've, and we've guesstimated now because statistics Canada does not give us the exact uh, figure of deaf and hard of hearing because this does come up quite a bit how many people are there that that have hearing loss we don't really know because that's Canada doesn't really know so we've kind of generated our own numbers based on the percentages of um, that that we give like you know two in ten people have hearing loss or you know so many over the age of have hearing loss so using those kind types of um, percentages, guesstimates and whatever, we, we figured that there's probably around 20 to 23,000 people in Cape Breton that have some degree of hearing loss, which is probably not that far off considering the industry that we have mm. here. Yeah. Um, and as I said, here in Cape Breton, we do deal a lot more with hard of hearing people. Um, but given that we have the, we had the steel plant, we had the, the mines, 
um, that those industries would would uh, present themselves with more, you know, people with 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 hearing loss. So. Um, one of the other um, questions was pertaining to culture and um, culture, yeah, deaf culture. And um, so what I did was I grafted this uh, little chart here. So when you're dealing with people who, uh, the deaf individuals who use American Sign Language, um, we, could, we, we kind of equate it to deaf culture compared to, to non, to, 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 I guess, an individual like myself would, would fall under hearing culture. Um, so both of which have a lot of, um, I guess, norms that we would look at, first of which would be language. So we, as a hearing person, I happen to speak English. Uh, somebody else might speak French. Somebody else might speak um, Spanish but we all have a language and deaf people have their own language and that is American Sign Language. So American Sign Language is spoken uh, or signed in uh, Canada and the US. It is not international. Every country has their own. Um, and uh, even in Quebec, they sign LSQ, it's not ASL. Um, so there's regional differences, like we have dialects. Um, so there's a lot more to sign language than, than maybe some people may think, but there is language. Language is at the core of, of the culture. Um, identity. So deaf people identify as, as a, uh, you, you identify as a, as a, as a person um, belonging to this uh, culture, um, which can include a number of things. Um, the school, we've all gone to school, we've all had experiences going to school, and deaf people's schools experience might be a little bit different, where they were gone, most of them may have gone to a residential school. So they, a lot of times, some of the older deaf people will talk about um, being taken from their home, when they were young children being sent to uh, this school, they didn't know where, what it was all about. A lot of the older deaf um, were forbidden to sign. Um, they might've been forced to speak. Um, so they all have these experiences in residential schools. Some of them may have been mainstreamed into public school. Um, so their school experiences are a little bit different. Their education is a little bit different from ours. They may not have all come out with a grade 12 that we think of as, as, as equating to our grade 12. So their background is different. Nowadays, it's a little bit different. Um, there's no residential schools in Nova Scotia anymore. All the deaf kids are mainstreamed into the public school system. Most of them, if they require it, have um, interpreters or other types of assistive devices with them, like an FM or something like that. But we also have to appreciate, you know, what the deaf experience is like for them in the classroom. And sometimes that's hard for us as hearing people to really identify with, but, but we will a little bit later because I'm going to give you an example. Customs are different. Um, so the deaf person, you know, like for us, um, we can do things like we're doing right now, like with Zoom, which is great. Um, the telephone was not such a great thing for deaf people. Um, it was for hearing people because now, because with the invention of the telephone, um, people from far away could have connections with one another. But for the deaf, it wasn't such a great thing because up to the telephone, in order to get together and socialize, you had to travel and go to in person for one another. And that's what the deaf like to do. They like to go and um, get into person, meet in person. They can sign, they can see each other, they can socialize. But when the invention of the phone came and families stopped going, traveling to see one another and they could talk on the phone, that didn't help deaf people at all. And even with the TTY, um, which was great, it was still putting the printed word in front of them. And so because ASL really doesn't have a printed version, 
there was miscommunications and it was trying to take a visual language and putting it in print. So it wasn't always the best form of communication for a lot of deaf people. What was helpful was what we're doing right now. Because now with FaceTime and Zoom and things like that, the deaf can now express themselves, see the person, they can sign across this, this medium, and it's great. So this is, this is the thing, except the technology itself to access it. So we have a number of deaf people trying to learn how to use a computer. Trying to use, trying to learn how to use the programming. So though the technology is there, I mean, it's like me trying to teach my dad how to use everything's email, right? So I'll say to dad, you know, why don't you Skype me later? Yeah, well, I tried to email you last night. Mm, no, you were trying to Skype me, right? So every, you know, it's the words, it's the terminology, it's the technology. So, um, you know, we, we we've been in discussion with some. Um, um, some funders about, you know, trying to get uh, linking up uh, different, uh, uh, say for interpreting to get everybody linked up through another platform. And it's like, well, you know, we have some people who know how to use Skype, they're not going to learn how to use Zoom, it's just not going to happen. So it's there's some complications there. But you can see how the history of deaf people their, their background, whether they were born of hearing parents, whether they were born of deaf parents, the influences, where they went to school, certainly would be a lot different from our experiences. Um, so sometimes we have to take a, take, take a step back and look at, look at these kinds of things. So there are differences. One of the things that I mentioned to a class the other day was one time I got into an elevator with a, with a client and I was sort of standing there tapping my foot and they were kind of looking, kind of like kind of moving a little bit. And they looked at me like, what are you doing? And I said, well, I'm sort of listening to the music. And they're like, what music? <laughs> well, there's music in elevators. Oh, <laughs> really? <laughs> you know, it's, it's something that we hear and, and, and don't even think about, but it's not part of the deaf experience, of course. Um, hearing loss itself, for those who have hearing loss, um, the kinds of things that we would look at if we were dealing with somebody who um, was hard of hearing. Hearing loss itself um, can be progressive. Um, it's painless, but it's also preventable. So when we're looking at um, noise uh, protection, um, we can try to do some education around that. And we also have to respect and help people understand that hearing loss is a loss. It's like losing a loved one. It's losing a part of oneself. So you are going to go through the stages of grief. And for a number of people, they might get stuck on a particular stage stage. They might get stuck on anxiety. They might get stuck on anger. They might get stuck on um, oh, uh, what the stages are, I forget right offhand. But until they get to acceptance, it's going to be very difficult for them to move forward. Um, so it's a lot of times we'll have the family members come in and they'll say, it's my husband and he's driving me crazy. He won't get anything done. He won't get a hearing aid. The TV's up too loud. It's trying to talk through to this person to help them understand they're not the only one. And the isolation that they're feeling, the loneliness, they will start to withdraw from social um, gatherings. They'll run to feel depressed. Once they accept and can move on to get a hearing test, hearing aids, devices, that's when things start to, to start to open up and look a lot better and we can work with the person. So it's that stage of grief thing. And I think once people understand that, that it is a loss, it's a loss like anything else. It seems to tweak something and then we can move forward. And there's also that financial burden that I talked about before, the cost of hearing aids. And people just don't seem to want to pay the price for the hearing aids. And I can understand that. They are expensive. But what you're going to gain from it is 
it's just going to open up so many doors and we can work with people and talk about hearing aids, the advantages of them. We don't sell hearing aids. We don't do testing here. We don't sell them. Uh, we can let you know where to go, um, but we can prepare you for what kinds of things to think about when you do go to get a hearing aid, what kind of questions to ask. We can work with you with that as well. So here are some ways to support, and David had already asked about donations, so there it is, donations. Um, so these are some ways um, that you may uh, that you may want to think about um, through the donations, hearing aids that we collect, memoriams is another way. Um, so we would take a, a for, through for a loved one um, if you wanted to make a, a memorial donation, we certainly will accept that. Um, through membership, we do have a membership um, list, uh, and with your membership, you would get a, we do a, a newsletter, and you would get notices of upcoming events, things like that that we do. Um, you can also serve on a committee. So if you're not particularly interested in officially joining as a board member, um, we do have committees that do work on specific projects. So we would certainly welcome you on a, on, on committee work. Or you can volunteer with us as on our board. And the kinds of things that our board does is uh, fundraising, um, promotional type of work, uh, definitely for marketing. So if you have experiences with uh, web design or uh, promotions, way to promote us a little better, yay, we'd love to have you. So there's all kinds of different ways that you can look at uh, helping us moving forward. And as a board of director, um, you would, uh, we do have a board orientation training um, uh, session that, 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 that I would walk you through. Um, we have bylaws um, that you would get. We have policies that we're constantly uh, looking at and changing and adding. Um, so if you have any policy experience, we would certainly welcome that. You are also responsible for governing our um, governing all of what I just mentioned. So reviewing our bylaws, looking at our policies, looking at our programs and services, what's working, what isn't, is there anything that needs to be changed, attending our meetings. Now we meet about once every six weeks as a rule, um, generally in the evening for about an hour, an hour and a half. Um, so you're more of a... Um, um, it's, it's a working board. Um, so sometimes people come and think, oh, well, they're going to meet, they're, then they're going to tell me what to do. That's not how it works. So it is a working board. Um, and basically, you're looking at our program services, and uh, bylaws, policies, and things like that. So Earlier, I talked about our funding structure, how we're, how we're, um, where our funding comes from. Majority, as you can see, there's Department of Community Services. And our annual budget last year was about $135,000, which is not a substantial amount of money. Um, so we do quite a bit for what we have. Um, so you can pretty much see what the breakdown is, um, what the breakdown is there. So community services, interpreting services, and uh, of course we try to do some fundraising and um, um, grant work and things like that. So we do a lot for a little. And these are just some quotations from um, testimonials from some of our clients. I'm not sure much, how much time I have left, David, or if I went over. <laughs> I think we're good. How uh, you you? Uh, I'm assuming this video, the YouTube video, you want to uh, maybe pop that on there. We got a bit. This is just uh, yeah. It's it's just a, a simulator um, to give you an idea of what sounds um, would would sound like to if you had a mild, moderate, or severe hearing loss. We can just look at a few samples if you wanted to bring it up. Uh, I think it's a bit of an eye opener. 
Okay, one sec here. Do, do. You might have to copy and paste. Yeah, I think I just need to copy it. I'm just gonna do that. Yeah, one sec here. Just bear with me. Okay, I'm just going to throw this in. Uh, I'm just making sure here's what I just put that in Rosalind is it uh, are you is it one of these ones that are I can't see anything right now David okay, just one sec. Share screen. Do, do, do. All right, can you see that now? Uh, yes, so let's look at the, um, yes, look, the girl, the girl in the red dress. Let's play. Sing it. Yeah, okay, sounds good. And we can't hear her, so, or maybe I have my, no, we're not hearing her. I don't know why. Volumes on. No, it's not working. Strange. All right, I don't know if that's uh, if you guys are hearing that on your end. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in the chat. Okay. Um, just so everybody can reference that. Okay. Perfect. Okay. All right. I'm just going to stop the share there. So I just popped that YouTube in uh, video in. It's only about a minute video. So mm -hmm. I'm going to get in the gist of it uh, with that uh, video, just kind of detailing just uh, what loss can hear like, which is a, a great video. It is a great video. And what she does is she, she, sings the, she sings the tune and the sound will go as it's showing the, the caption. She'll, she'll, it'll show it, her singing normally and then it'll go a little less and, the, and, and it'll change. And it's, 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 quite, uh, it's quite powerful. Um, so from there, I think that pretty much um, concluded what, what I was going to go over, um, hope, hoping to have covered most of the questions um, that were sent to me, but certainly open to any other um, questions anybody may have. Um, just a quick question that Roz and I have, just for this six assistive technology piece, do you tap into any other not-for-profits or grant programs um, to make some of those requests happen, or do you work with other, other, other groups? Uh, I'm not sure. So say, for example, March of Dimes, right, has assistive tech. So do you partner, if, you know, um, with other, if, if there's specific assistive technology devices, do you look to partner with other not-for-profits or, or collaborate with them? I guess my question would be. Okay, so we, we do work with the Canadian Hard of Hearing Association um, and the Canadian Hearing Society as far yeah. as the technologies. Um, and, and then, of course, if there are, um any requests that need to be made like with children like there's a purple elks like like for funding and things yeah. like that like other Perfect. service plots yeah yeah awesome okay no that's terrific mm -hmm. so i think we'll we'll open it up if there's any questions if folks want to just type a question in the uh, chat box or you can just jump on here or come off mute if you have a question uh, for rosalind I'm just going to give it uh, 30 seconds here, Rosalind. I, I don't, you never know. Someone may be ch um, typing a, a question here. I just want to say thanks, Rosalind. I, I didn't realize that the, it was so complicated. There's so many um, different ways to look at this. And I guess as a hearing person, I didn't, I've never appreciated that until you spoke about it today. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks.
Yeah, no, and I can echo what Grace said. I certainly learned a lot today just with the work you guys are doing as well. So again, like, and that was kind of why we got behind doing these webinars is just to kind of shine a light on the good work that's being done because I think, you know, it's more of an appreciation for what you folks uh, especially do now, kind of snapshot into a day, which is, which is great, right? So we certainly appreciate all this great information, right? So um but what, just one comment here from uh maura so technology is great but the expense uh, is challenging right so I, and i think we can all agree on that right rosalind exactly yeah yeah so i know if there's ways if just when we're supporting people and we run up against those challenges it's it's just you know to, to kind of tap our networks and if there's any any funding at all whatsoever in pockets of government and we always make it a uh uh, we always look the best we can, right? So, but it, exactly, it, it is very challenging. And I, and I must say, like, if there's anything, anything related to hearing loss at all, give, give me a call um, because, you know, sometimes things get donated to us. Um, you know, there's, there's, there's so much more that's, you know, back here 30 years some years of experience that you know sometimes just so one little thing that you know request can come in and it's like oh yes well let me you know i can i know someone i might be able to tap into and you know can check check things out so um like it was mentioned it's it's a very complicated intertwined field and there's 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 so much what, that we can access so if you know anybody or need anything related to any client that you may have who has hearing loss, definitely give us a call. Awesome. Um, Rosalind, can you do me a favor there? Pam, Pam O'Connorhan has a great question there. Just the, uh, are you able to email, or actually you did, the slides uh, from today? Is it okay if we distribute those slides? Um, uh, Pamela is just wondering if uh, she could have a copy of the slide deck. Sure. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Okay. No. And maybe what we'll do is uh, Grace, uh, we'll, Grace can distribute it to everybody who is on the call today, just that slide deck. And because I think your comfort, your um, contact information is there, right? So mm -hmm. awesome. Okay, guys, um, if there's no other questions, just want to thank Rosalind for hopping on today. This was awesome, very informative. And I, I, re I really enjoy doing these uh, once once a month um, now just with uh, to get to learn so much about uh, uh, all the different not-for-profits that are doing great work in Sydney and Cape Breton and surrounding areas and your not-for-profit Rosalind is is uh, is no different just the the amazing work you guys are doing so kudos to you guys uh, the work you're doing and uh, keep up the great work and uh, we look forward to keep us in the loop because we'd love to share what's going on in our newsletter too as well any programs that you have coming up um, just so we we can kind of keep keep tabs of uh, what you guys are up to perfect excellent and I will tweak the PowerPoint just a bit I'll add our charitable number on there as well so. send it yeah send it yeah. to me and we'll we'll get that out to everybody who is uh, who is on uh, on the call here today. Okay, perfect. Awesome. Thank you. Anyway, everybody, it's 11 o'clock. Thank you so much again for joining us. And uh, we look forward to coming to you next month. So stay tuned in the next few weeks for our next uh, our next guest. So have a great day, Rosalind. Thanks so much. Thanks, David. Thank Take you. Take care. Bye now. Bye.